Hi, welcome to this week's Midweek Connection. My name is Todd Jordan. I serve as senior pastor here at Strawbridge United Methodist Church, and I am delighted that you've joined me today. I am looking in the book of 2 Kings. Now, uh, you may not be as familiar with that as maybe some of the Gospels, but let me assure you, there are some wonderful, wonderful stories uh, in the Old Testament. And um, in 2 Kings, uh, we are during the time of the prophet Elisha. Uh, the, um, the, the kingdom of Israel is actually divided into to two countries, Israel to the north and Judah to the south. And in chapter 3 of 2 Kings, uh, we read about a time when uh, one of the neighboring countries, Moab, is declaring war on Israel and Judah and Edom. So those three kings, Israel, Judah, and Edom, get together and agree that they're going to take on the the army of Moab together. The problem is uh, the kings, especially the kings of of Israel, to a certain degree Judah, have not been as faithful to God as maybe they should have. And the current king of Israel, his dad, uh, his parents were Ahab and and Jezebel, and they were not faithful at all. Uh, They worshipped other gods. And so when the three kings come together, the kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom, uh, they they discern that that God has called them together, but then when they go to show up at the battlefield uh, to where the fight's supposed to happen, there's no water anywhere. And there there were some some, uh, streams that, that were in the area that should have provided water for the troops, for their cattle, and for their horses and it's all dried up and so their interpretation is God has called us out here to kill us because if we can't stay hydrated Moab's going to come in and and uh, destroy us and so they want to consult a prophet and find out if God is going to be with them or not and uh, the, the king of Judah says to the king of Israel, hey, isn't Elisha around here? He's a man of God. Why don't we go ask him? So the king of Israel goes to Elisha and um, says, you know, hey, uh, we believe that, you know, uh, we're supposed to be here in battle, but is God going to destroy us or, or help us out? And Elisha Uh, says this to the king of Israel in verse 13. What have I to do with you? Go to your father's prophets or to your mother's. In other words, you want to worship the false gods when it suits you, but now that you need something, you're coming to me? I don't think so. And um, they, they, they sort of uh, beg him and they say, no, we really feel like God has called us here. And Elisha says, listen, um, because God is faithful, we're going to do you this one one faith, uh, favor, uh, or we're going to su- uh, going to support you. Um, and so He says, in the morning, even though you're not going to see any rain or any wind, the water's going to be there for you. And not only that, because that's nothing for God. Not only that, He's going to deliver Moab. Uh, into your hands. And sure enough, the next morning, there's water filling up the streams and uh, they're able to defeat uh, their enemy. And this is a uh, one of many stories that we read about in the Old Testament, how God remains faithful in the face of our flakiness. Uh, we waffle in our faith. Uh, we run to the world um, when there's something of the world that we want or need. But then when things don't go our way, we go to God. And here's the thing. God is always steadfast, always there for us. Uh, when will we learn <laughs> that there's only one God and only God can do what God can do? I hope that you'll take some time uh, to to look at 2 Kings chapter 3 and read that story for yourself and just reflect on the ways that God has been there and continues to be there for you in your life. And um, maybe all of us can do a little bit better about being more faithful to the God who is always faithful to us. Thank you so much. May God bless you. And I look forward to worshiping with you this Sunday.